It has really thick grass, but there's also a lot of trees around. Mm -hmm. And it's like springtime with flowers. Mm -hmm. Describe this place. Is it flat or hilly? Look around you and see. What does it look like? It's a little hilly. Mm -hmm. Tell me more. Skies are really blue. Mm -hmm. Like bluer than our skies. Mm -hmm. It's almost surreal. Mm -hmm. Let's see what's in this place. I want you to look around and see if perhaps there's a path. I feel like Alice in Wonderland. Mm -hmm. Like Alice. Mm -hmm. And there's Bunny and... So kind of like on a little journey. Okay, so let's take this little journey and see where you go. Look around you and see if there's a way there's to a get cave. around. Mm -hmm. There's a cave. Let's go in that cave and see what's there. Well, it's dark. Mm -hmm. Tell me more. Look all around you. It's wet. Mm -hmm. Walls of the cave are wet. And I have a, uh, like a, like a something on fire light thing in my hand mm -hmm. so I can see. Mm -hmm. Like a torch? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So let's see what's in this cave. Tell me which direction you're going in. It's, just, it's more straight. Mm -hmm. It's not like down. And uh, there's water. And I've had this vision of this place mm -hmm. before. Okay, we'll keep that out of it. We're in okay. the present now. I want you to look exactly what's in front of you. Like hieroglyphs on the walls. Mm -hmm. Tell me if those hieroglyphs have any color. Yeah, they're like Native American with like red, the red paint. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. It's not paint, but chalk. And in this place, in this cave, is it wet here? No. <clears throat> no, the walls here aren't wet. So let's find out what this place is. Is it larger than where you were? Look around you. A lot of red dirt. Mm -hmm. How much can you see in this cave? Not a lot. Mm -hmm. See if you can illuminate your feet and tell me what is on your feet. Barefoot. Mm -hmm. What do your feet look like? Male. Mm -hmm. I want you to use your spiritual eyes and tell me what is, is it that you look like? A uh, very handsome mm -hmm. buff male mm -hmm. with just a cloth on. Long black hair. Mm -hmm. Are you wearing your hair in any way particular? Just down. Mm -hmm. It's kind of long past my shoulders. Mm -hmm. Do you have anything else in your hands? See if you're carrying anything. Maybe a like a, a small purse, like a coin, mm -hmm. not, not a coin thing, but a pouch, mm -hmm. a pouch with tie. With a tie? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What do you imagine is in this pouch? Like herbs or something. Mm -hmm. So let's find out what it is that you're doing in this place. What's the first thing that comes to mind? What is this place? It's sacred. Mm-hmm. I'm talking to the spirits. So or I went there to talk to the spirits. Mm -hmm. Let's find out what you found. Find out while you're talking to the spirits. I'd like for you to connect with them now. And let's see what their spirits are saying. mind. 
extraterrestrials. Mm -hmm. Tell me more. It's like I have a secret mm -hmm. place I can go and talk to them and that I'm like a leader back at my uh, tribe and I get information mm -hmm. from them and it's like it's a secret though I don't tell them I go talk to extraterrestrials mm -hmm. it's like I go back and I just bring information mm -hmm. that uh, because they would never understand I'm a storyteller mm -hmm. So let's find out more information about these extraterrestrials to see if you've ever actually encountered them in this lifetime. I want you to go back in time in the same lifetime to see how you first discovered your connection with the extraterrestrials. Go back in time. They came to me like a, as a light being. Mm -hmm. two, two of them. Mm-hmm. They just appeared. What do they look like? Just a silhouette of a human, but it's all light. Mm-hmm. What do they say to you? when they come to you? That they're my family. Mm -hmm. How does that make you feel? So it makes me feel good. Mm -hmm. I'm not scared. So let's see what happens next. I'd like for you to close that scene. and Let's go now to the next significant scene in that same lifetime. Something important is happening. Be there now. I see fire. Mm -hmm. Where is this fire? Mm, it's at camp. It's a, it's in a it's in a fire pit. Mm -hmm. Camp. There's a bunch of the elders sitting around. There's sparks coming up out of the fire. People dancing around the fire. It's like a big occasion. Mm -hmm. Let's find out what you're doing there. They're doing ceremony or something. Mm -hmm. Are they dressed any differently? They have their, they have their headdresses on and all their garb. Mm -hmm. Rattles and... It kind of feels like to me they're conjuring up demons. Mm -hmm. How are you dressed? I have face paint on. I don't have any of their stuff on. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's like I'm not taking part in what they're doing. Just kind of watching. So let's see what happens. But I'm, I'm faking it. Mm -hmm. What happens during this ceremony? See, everything is going dark. It's like they're, they don't even know what they're doing. They're conjuring up spirits. What happens with these spirits? They go into people. They're conjuring up spirits that go into people. How do you feel about this? It's like I know what they're doing. But I don't really feel that judgmental mm -hmm. because I have my friends. Mm, I see. That it's like I see a bigger picture. Mm -hmm. But I, I do feel like I'm alone a lot. What's your role in the tribe? It's like I'm undercover. Mm -hmm. 
Like, what do I do? You see what you do mostly during the day. I'd like for you to see yourself now doing what you typically do during the daytime. I act like a hunter. Mm-hmm. I don't like killing things. It's like, it's like I'm um, eyes and ears for the extraterrestrials. Mm-hmm. Like I'm just an observer. So I have to play a role. It's like I allow I allow them to see through me mm-hmm. and watch. And I'm very smart because I can play I can play the role that I need to play without being found out about. Mm-hmm. Do you have a family? I don't feel like I do. Mm-hmm. All right. So now if I do. If I do, I'm not really connected with connected. them very well. Very good. So let's close that scene now. Let's go to another important scene in your lifetime. Something that's impacting you. And be there. Well, I feel like I. I mean, the first thing I feel like I see is like I got shot with an arrow right in the heart mm-hmm. I feel like that doesn't hurt just got shot in the heart so I want you to step away from that body and see it from an outsider and let's see where that arrow came from a jealous another jealous clan member Mm -hmm. shot me right in the heart with an arrow my own people take a look at this clan member's eyes because every every all the eyes are just a window to the soul i'd like for you to look at those eyes and see if you recognize them in the life of michelle who do those eyes belong to Do they seem familiar? Well, they're angry. This mm-hmm. person's very angry. Mm-hmm. Trying to look at the face, and it it's not very clear that it's, a, it's an old, wrinkly, angry Indian-type Native American. Mm-hmm. Looking, looking a little closer. Mm-hmm. You will recognize the soul if you know it. Does it seem familiar to you? Or is it just somebody angry? I don't really. Okay, that's fine. So let's leave that body. Leave that man to be there on his own. He will find peace. I'd like for you now to drift away from that scene and tell me where you go next. What's the next thing that happens to you after you leave that body? What do you see? Look all around you using all of your senses as you drift and float through time and space. What's the first image that comes to mind? Look around you and tell me where you are. Just like when you were in that cave, it was very dark. But you used the torch to light your way. I'd like for you to use your senses now to light your way to another image of another lifetime that's affecting you now. 
using the breath to take you deeper and deeper within. Traveling through time and space. Drifting and floating. Floating and drifting. To another time. Another place. Where there is information that we would like to find that helps you in the most important way. So I go back to the ship. Mm -hmm. Tell me what the ship looks like. Describe it for me. The more you talk, the more you'll see. Well, don't really see much. Mm -hmm. um, Use all of your senses then. Does this place seem like it's large or small? Kind of small. Mm -hmm. Kind of a control room. With all kinds of electronics. Mm -hmm. Do you sense that you're by yourself or is there someone with you? No, there's like a crew, small crew. Mm -hmm. I mean, I kind of feel like it's like relating to like a Star Trek, mm -hmm. but I don't. So let's take a look at their, their bodies. What does the crew look like? Can you see their bodies? No. Mm -hmm. Can you see your own body? I felt female mm -hmm. when I first thought about where I was. Mm -hmm. So let's go with that as a female. Would and I feel like I have a uniform on, like in Star Trek. Mm -hmm. So let's take a look at your uniform and see what it looks like. Describe this uniform for me. What color is it? I want to say it's blue. Mm -hmm. I can't really see. For some reason, I can't really see much. It's okay. You don't have to see with your eyes. I want you to use all of your senses. Sometimes when you walk into a dark room, you're using other senses like bats use. So I want you to use that. Use your knowing instead of your sight. So when I ask you, the color of the uniform, you'll just know what color it is. You don't have to see it. So in this place, in this ship, what else do you know that's there? What's the first thing that pops into your mind? What role do you feel that you play there? I'm just literally nothing is coming to me. Okay, that's fine. So let's close that scene. Let's drift away from that scene. And I'd like to, for you to go back to that dream that you had when you were late for class. I want you to see yourself back in that dream. I want you to describe that dream for me. Be in it and tell me what's happening. Well, I've got a long way to go from one class to the other, mm -hmm. all the way across campus. Mm -hmm. I just can't understand why classes have to be so far away and I'm never going to make it on time. Mm -hmm. Look around you and describe where you are. What does this place look like? 
um, college campus with different buildings. They all have names. And it's like, it's like, it's like the first, it's like the first day or week of classes, but it's not. But I can't remember how to get from one building to the other. I've got, I've got to get a map and I've got to go to the desk and get a copy of my schedule because I don't, I don't have that with me and I don't know what room it's in. And it's, it's like. So take me through and let's find out what happens. Tell me everything that happens along the way. So I find the administration building and I go give them my name and, I'm at, and I ask for a copy of the schedule. And eventually I get that and then I got to go all the way back across the campus mm -hmm. to the building and then I find my classroom and they're already in class and I join the class. Mm -hmm. Let's find out what this class is all about. Let's find out what you're learning in this class. I'd like for you to find a seat and let's listen and see what it's all about. What are they teaching you in this class? And you'll just know the answer. What subject? Well, I guess it's math. Mm-hmm. But it doesn't feel right. Mm-hmm. Tell me why it doesn't feel right. Because I can't really tune in. I'm having a hard time tuning in to, to it. And I can't remember my dream. Mm-hmm. You don't have to remember. You just have to know it. So let's find out what it is that you're supposed to be learning in this class. I want you to see yourself there. And I'm going to count from one to three. When I get to three, I'll tap your forehead. And we'll be able to tap in to that knowledge. One, two, and three. Allow your mind to expand now. And you'll be able to understand what this subject is all about. What's coming into your mind? What is your teacher trying to teach? I don't know because I've missed so much school mm -hmm. and uh, I have all of these zeros on my report card. Mm -hmm. I mean, for every class, every, I missed all of it. So I don't know. I have no idea what they're talking about. Mm -hmm. And all my assignments have zeros and I've got to somehow convince my teacher that he needs to pass me because I've already, I only have like a couple of semesters left mm -hmm. and, and I need to convince him to put all A's in there where there's zeros. Mm -hmm. All right. And I don't know what's, I don't I have no idea what they're teaching. So let's imagine now that your guide is in the desk next to you. I want you to imagine your guide sitting next to you and your guide has brought you here. And I want you to ask your guide why he's brought you here. What do you get to the answer? I've missed out on learning a lot of stuff and I don't understand why. Mm-hmm. So let's speak with your guide. I'm going to touch your forehead and let's ask the guide. One, two, and three. Good evening, guide. Why have you brought Michelle to this classroom? What are you trying to tell her? She's been gone a very long time. Mm -hmm. Where has she been gone from? Her home. Mm -hmm. Is this classroom her home? 
No. Mm -hmm. So why don't you tell her what her home is and why she's been gone so long? She was supposed to be back before now, mm -hmm. but the plan has changed. Mm -hmm. Who changed the plan? Source. Mm -hmm. What happened? She's been wondering. There are so many complicated things that she could not possibly understand as to why when she left she thought that she would be gone a certain amount not of time but just rel relative she didn't think she was going to be gone so long but there were a lot of things done to change. Mm -hmm. um, re relative space and time, mm -hmm. and many, 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 many beings have been stuck and were not able to leave when they were supposed to. And uh, we want her to know it's not her fault. It's not her fault that she missed out on all the lessons that she hoped to have learned. And and those lessons were just put there for her experience. But there were so many other, other things that she learned make up for it. Mm -hmm. Your soul is, the soul is learning, the soul is growing, but it isn't anything like it was supposed to be, but, but maybe better in the end. Why have there been so many changes? The That's dark has just done so many incursions mm -hmm. that we never knew we never knew how it was going to turn out. And I know that she feels like she's been forgotten about and is just spinning her wheels, but on another level, her soul is growing and she is going above and beyond. Um, improv, improv, improv. Mm -hmm. She's like improving every day. Mm -hmm. Well, she recently made a change in part of her career. Was this part of the improv? Yes. Mm -hmm. What is it that she's supposed to be focusing on? Her voice. Her voice. Can you tell her a little bit about that? People relate to her voice, mm -hmm. and so they like just to listen to her talk, mm -hmm. and they feel comforted because it, it comes from the higher dimensions, it has a resonance that comforts them, and more than anything, she's a comforter. She's like a babysitter. Mm -hmm. She's not really teaching anything. It's like sitting in that classroom, not really learning anything. You're just being there. Mm -hmm. You're just there. You're just being present. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So when she has all of these projects, is she basically just holding space for people? Yes. Mm-hmm. All of these conferences and yes. websites and everything. Yeah, none of it really matters. It's just comforting. Mm -hmm. it, 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 it's buying time. Mm -hmm. It's buying time. What is she buying time for? It's been stretched out. And people are so tired and confused 
My fans are falling asleep. Mm -hmm. She had a lot of questions about the new earth. Is this part of mm. what people are all tired about? Everybody wants it to happen now. Uh -huh. What do you say? It fluctuates and changes every single moment. Can you explain a little bit about that? Why it, ex why it changes so much? As she knows, the light team doesn't just go in and attack and change and do things against a free will plan or society or group and so they're always on the defensive always reacting or mm -hmm. we're, we're always reacting and so how can you know it's going to happen if you're always reacting mm -hmm. You can only create and do, and that was part of the deal. How bad would they be? How bad would the children be? How ridiculous and, and horrible would they drag this out knowing that it's going to end? And so the more that they do against the light beings, the more the light beings can do in equality uh, to move forward and they were really laying low after 2012 trying to drag things out and do things in secret and not really attack but still stealthily doing things so nobody was really moving anywhere nobody was really doing a lot to they were doing timeline incursions mm. and we were trying to send people back from the future to change little parts mm -hmm. to make up for it every time they did something. Can you tell me a little bit more about this, how you send people back? Who are these? <sighs> future selves mm -hmm. that walk in mm -hmm. to their own selves. They walk in and they how do they do that? They use their consciousness mm -hmm. and they travel and they walk in and they try to affect the way that they reacted or did something or didn't do something mm -hmm. in so order. It's a game back and forth. The dark do something, the light go back. There, it, it, it all has to stop. It all's got to stop. I've been doing this for th thousands and thousands and thousands of years. And they cause this game. This game cost, caused so many. We, we did the timeline incursions, the light, mm -hmm. because we were doing things going back trying to change things and they were using technology and we, we used our minds and our consciousness and we jump into ourselves and do something different and it just messed everything up. Oh. Nobody knew what they were doing. Nobody knew the impact that they were having on all of it. In what year was this happening? Well, it's all happening in the future. Mm, I see. And then, then and they're going back to try to change the outcome of the future, mm -hmm. but that's messing everything up too. Could this be causing some of that Mandela effect? Yeah, it's all. Mm -hmm. Every time they change something, it changes everything else? Yeah, let me go into this and find out mm -hmm. why 
what what's gonna stop okay so let me go into this So, okay, so this is a, this, this, this whole, this whole playground is a creation that allows you to do all this in this reality because you can't do that out there. You would mess too many things up. Hmm. It was all kind of like cocooned. This, this third dimension, you mean? Mm, no, the fourth dimension's a part of it. The fifth okay. dimension's a part of it. Mm. It's bigger than that. Okay. Um, uh, yeah, it's bigger than that. Uh, it's like it's like a universe mm. that. I mean, what's the, when is it ever going to stop if you can always, when you're in the future and you're out of the third dimension and you can travel with your consciousness and you can realize that you can go back to the past in the third dimension and change something to try to make your current situation better, when does that ever stop? Mm -hmm. And then the dark always know that they can, as long as you're doing that, they can do things and try to steal souls and put them in more realities like that so that they can have energy. So when does it ever stop? How is Michelle working with this? Well... What's, what's her role in this? Hmm. So... Okay, so even you even, it's just even on it. I can't even describe it. It's like. And try your best. On a. Source is doing it. Mm -hmm. Source is, is even going back. So Source is sending its angels back. It's, it's bizarre because it's supposed to be happening all at the same time, but. But. How is that possible? Source is sending angels in mm -hmm. to undo, unravel. It's so complicated because everything is so intertwined. And there's so many aspects of so many beings all in this reality. It's, but Source hasn't, has, a plan to get things at least under control because it's very obvious things are out of control no doubt but it's it's only being intervened on because it the energy is affecting source itself what kind of energy is affecting source? It's disharmony. Mm -hmm. It's um, all of the negative emotions, mm -hmm. all of the fear and sadness, anger, jealousy. Um, all of those emotions are, since we're all connected and we're all one, the source is feeling all of those. Mm -hmm. Although it's not really in it, and it's not really feeling, it does vibrationally change the uh, the structure. The structure changes the like the composition, vibration, mm -hmm. something like that. 
Is this just coming from Earth, or is it coming from all over the place? It's uh, spread, mm -hmm. and uh, I mean, it's it's spread a lot of places in this galaxy. Mm -hmm. It's like a cancer. It's like a cancer in the body. It's like the galaxy is very much like a human body. Mm -hmm. And so, when the human body has a cancer, it's like the Milky Way is like a cancer of the, of the universe. Mm -hmm. So, with all of these changes that are happening, how is that affecting this new Earth? The shift to the new Earth? All of what changes? All of these changes of going back and changing the timelines oh. and things like that. The new Earth was the that was the solution. Mm -hmm. That was the, that was the solution. It's like okay, well, it's no it's no different than a summer land. Mm -hmm. It's a transitional place and way to heal and get out of the continuous recycling of souls, of pieces of souls, not even just souls, pieces of their souls that have been split up and sent back in. And it's a way to bring all those pieces back together psychologically to have healing and finally have that um, the joy again because there's fractured souls. Mm -hmm. If you're fractured and you're not connected to Source, you're not going to have peace and joy. And it's... So right now there's a lot of awakening people. They're waking up to all of this. And Michelle wanted to know if she is going to be shifting to the new earth in this body, or is she going to go home? A lot of people aren't going to want to hear it, but it isn't like... Uh, it isn't like you take your body. It's more like death. Mm -hmm. But where you're going, you can reformulate a body any way you want. Mm -hmm. So there must be a little bit of miscommunication to think that you're going to take the body with you. Mm -hmm. So it will, you will have to go through a sort of death, or a death, in you order to shift that. to release. You have to, to release You it. have to release the mm -hmm. third dimension third-dimensional frequencies in the body. Mm -hmm. And is this happening in Michelle's lifetime? This shift to the new earth? When she leaves this body behind, will she be shifting there? Well, that's a little bit of a trick question because the lifetime is infinite. Mm. So there is really no lifetime. It's all one big long chain of life. Can you explain that to her? How do you see a lifetime compared to what she sees? Well, when someone dies, they never really die and they continue to be who they are and that that personality just goes on to have another life so they're all connected and they're it's not like they even really change complete personalities mm -hmm. they're just in a different body they have a little bit different programming but they're still the same being mm -hmm. they're still the same person or being 
or what is that like shard mm -hmm. so when you showed Michelle that lifetime of a Native American talking to the extraterrestrials what would you tell what were you actually telling her and everything that she thinks is true about her connection with the Native Americans and that um, you know she's still undercover in every lifetime that she goes in on mission mm -hmm. she's still doing the same thing how is she undercover now? she's um she's What's the word? She's um, doing much, much more than she shows on the surface, even though there's so many people that are tuned into what she says and all of that. That is like the, the icing. That's like the tip of the iceberg. Mm -hmm. So much more on another level that is happening and it's about frequency and it's about it's about <sighs> what does she do with her frequency does she affect people just by yeah. being oh yeah mm -hmm. just by being born mm -hmm. So she's put into the t the most challenging. She does this over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. What does she do? She goes into the darkest or densest vibration, mm -hmm. and and then witnesses things being done to her, being done around her, being around. The lower frequencies so mm -hmm. that she can balance that out she's like a secret not secret but a specialist mm -hmm. she's a specialist is she going to be doing that in any other relationships that she's considering being a specialist mm -hmm. changing people or will she finally go into a situation where she doesn't need to going to the darkest hmm. no she's going dark mm. she knows that and it's kind of freaking her out but she knows that she would get bored <laughs> mm. if she just sits around in all love and light so she <laughs> She takes on the she takes on the assignments mm -hmm. that only she could handle. She's done this so many times. In this, she's lifetime? done this in Orion. Mm -hmm. She's done this in the Pleiades. She's done this in other galaxies. She's a, a messenger and an agent and a. And she is an uh, she takes the records. She's an observer, mm -hmm. and she's a change agent. Mm -hmm. And she's a communicator. And it's a chameleon, and she was trained for this, but that's what it is. She's in a new situation, mm -hmm. 
tell her that about that. she didn't have the class for. Okay. That's the thing. That's the thing. So yeah. what was this class that she was supposed to take? Well, it didn't matter. There, there's no way to prepare for this. Okay. This is, this is all the unknown. That's it. Mm -hmm. There were so many beings going back and changing the timelines and doing all these changes that we got thrown into the unknown where they couldn't do that anymore. Mm -hmm. And they had to just play it out. And nothing has been created in this reality yet. We're creating it. So there is no nothing to change because it's just unfolding. I That's see. what's different. And she not she hadn't taken a class for that. There's no class she can take for the unknown. Mm -hmm. That's what that is. That's why she felt like she was missing her um, training or class mm -hmm. or didn't know where she was supposed to be. She just had to let it unfold. When she came into this lifetime, or before she came in, what was her purpose? What was the mission that she came here to do? Go into the darkest places mm -hmm. and shine the light. Very simple. Who helps her with this? We do. Mm -hmm. Can you tell her who you are? I am her. I am... She's a part of me. I couldn't send a whole part of myself down and lose myself, so part of me had to stay on the outside of the reality. Mm -hmm. And we do, well, I'm more than just one, mm -hmm. and we do coordination, report back, organize, assemble, plan, meet, talk, share, strategize. It's all a big job always going on. Mm -hmm. When does this happen, all of this strategizing and planning? All the time. Does this she... is a big deal. What's happening is a big deal. Mm -hmm. Now we have heard a lot about those star seeds coming in all these people coming in to change things at yes. this time. Can you explain a little bit about that? How did yes. they decide to come here and who are they? They're on a higher level, they're all like angels. Mm -hmm. But as they split themselves up, they became lower level angels. They split themselves up, they became stars. They split themselves up, they became creators of other universes. There's, they're all, on a higher level, they're all one big, one big, what are they? They're one big consciousness mm -hmm. on a higher level. But, um, the parts of their consciousness that went down further and then like were on, there's like these spaceships that are just balls of light of consciousness of thousands of be people or beings or consciousnesses together. There, there, there's too many thing. there's too many beings to even mention mm -hmm. where they came from, but like they could be on another planet, they could be on a on a conscious spaceship, they could be on a hard spaceship, they could be um, in space just hanging out next to source, they could be they could be a gazillion places, but what happened with Earth? was like a virus. It was like a 
glitch and it began to to spread like on your computer mm -hmm. it began to affect the whole mainframe and that's when something had to be done about it to in effect keep it from wiping out the whole everything mm -hmm. period there was It'd be like allowing a cancer to kill you. When did this happen originally? When did we get this virus? It was when the rules of creation were not followed and when person creates something, they can't just put a computer in charge of running it mm -hmm. and just leave it. You just can't do that. You have to be responsible with your creations and you have to keep, keep tending the garden or the weeds grow. Mm -hmm. And so a win would be when the beings came to earth that were mining for gold mm -hmm. and wanted to put everything on an automatic program to make sure they were getting their gold and producing enough beings to do it. And had a slave race to do that. So these were clones that they were creating? They were clones, but then they got mixed with consciousness mm -hmm. and some rules were broken on using other creators' body bodies that they created mm -hmm. to use their DNA. There wasn't they did didn't weren't supposed to mix mm. all those different they made they made uh inharmonious DNA matches and took they took the ability to remember that they were connected to source away, which is, that's a no-no. Mm -hmm. You don't do that. You don't do that. So how long ago was this? Hmm. This was like, the first thing that I think of is like 500,000 years. Mm -hmm. Not sure. This is because it's there's been so many. It's like years are not really years because all of the timelines keep changing and mm -hmm. and get like things get extended out, like they get expanded out. So mm -hmm. it's, it's and then the, and then this team comes in and and contracts it back and then. This team comes in and expands it out some more, mm -hmm. and this team comes back and puts it back in. It's like... So the dinosaurs <laughs> could have been here 5,000 years ago. It, yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. there's no time. It's yeah. the part that gets stretched and, and put back together, that time, mm -hmm. that time line, that's all malleable. So mm -hmm. there could have been five years ago, right? for all we know because we insert ourselves every day we wake up. Hmm. We insert ourselves into the timeline. We're time traveling all the time. Mm -hmm. So when we go to sleep? We're time traveling. Mm -hmm. Just we, insert, we reinsert ourselves back where we think that we need to be to pick back up, but that doesn't mean that it was 
yesterday was yesterday Mm -hmm. at all. Are we creating the timeline too? Are we creating our own reality? I've heard that when we're not even focusing on something that doesn't exist. Well, yes, because it is all a figment of your imagination anyway. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, is as long as you're in a body, Mm -hmm. you... You're not connected consciously you don't know that you're creating it Mm -hmm. so that's the trick though because it isn't supposed to really be like that you're like a you're like a mutt Mm mm-hmm um, you know, like a genetic disorder, like, because you're supposed to consciously create, but you're unconsciously creating, and that, that means you're not responsibly creating. So it's all, it's all messed up. It's all backwards. You should be, be, you should be able to just manifest whatever it is that you want. You should be able to, and it's all hardship, and it's mm-hmm. all backwards. Mm-hmm. Has anybody perfected that manifestation? process oh yeah okay. all outside of this creation mm-hmm. out of, outside of this this thing that you're in this earth no it's bigger than that mm. it's bigger than that it's it's a universe okay and itself like a universe uh, so see it's all relative it's all relative it's like Big, little, doesn't matter. I mean, a bigger is the same as much, much smaller. (laughs) Mm -hmm. It's all relative. It's, but it is a place. It is a vibration. It is a location. It is a, it it does exist because you're here. Mm -hmm. Consciousness is here. Like, what are you in though? What are you in? You're in a, a uh, vessel that's within another vessel, which which is within another vessel, and all of that layering is keeping you from being your highest self, and so, and so in a way, it's turning inside out, and your highest self is coming in to turn it all out, hmm. to make out the same as in. So when you said that this vessel is in a different body or a different vessel, are we talking about the different bodies that we have, for example, the etheric body and the astral body and things like that, or are we talking about something different? No, this is more like... How do I explain this? The vessel is the body, mm-hmm. and just the words just aren't coming very, very easily. Mm-hmm. The vessel is the body, and the body is a mutt, like mm-hmm. a mixed dog, okay. like mixed DNA, mm-hmm. and then it, and that is all put on on an earth that is a creation, but it's um, like a copy. Mm-hmm. To let things play out it's like a copy okay and there's a real earth there's really? like another earth where this isn't happening where is this earth it's it's actually um, superimposed hmm. it's like it's like the same place but in a different space okay and so that is the that's the the change it's, it's changing from one space to another space. Mm-hmm. Same template, different program. Do we ever go to this other earth? 
Are we able to shift from, from one earth to this other one at any time? Or is it drastically different? It's drastically different. Mm -hmm. In what way? I mean, there's no industrial anything, mm -hmm. commercial anything on the other earth. This is like so different. Is it very pris much pristine like it used to be? When it's it was very created? pristine. Mm -hmm. And people don't live on walk and smash the flowers and, mm -hmm. and pour concrete and um, cut down trees. Um, they don't need to because it's because they can manifest what they need. Okay. And, and, uh, they, you know, they can, they can communicate with the, the grass. So why would they stomp down the grass? Mm -hmm. Why would they smash? Be like, you know, hitting something over the head. Why would you hurt mm -hmm. something? Are we living on that earth ourselves? We're living there. So we're living there, but our perception is different. Mm -hmm. It's this, um, this other place I was telling you about, this other reality. And mm -hmm. I think it's the, the, the way to explain it is it's the body that ties us to that reality. Okay. So that's why leaving the body in a, it's, that's why the shift is like dying. Mm -hmm. Okay. You take the template with you, but you don't take the body with you. Mm -hmm. Take the template with you of creation, but not the body itself because it has too many flaws. It's like, it's like the mutt. Mm -hmm. um, the We're going to have light bodies. Is that it? A different type of body? Not necessarily a light body. You have the template okay. to be able to create this body. You're taking the template for the creation, mm -hmm. but without the distortions, okay. without the mutt part. It's okay. like a pure, you're purebred again. She'll so be able to connect and manifest. Yeah. Very easily. Yeah. Good. Good. Um, she has questions um, about people creating their new earth, and I guess we're talking about the same thing. Mm, that is. Do we all live on the same earth mm. when we leave here? So that, that again is another perception question if we're all one mm -hmm. then there is no separation there is no another earth there is no other mm -hmm. but when it comes down to coming down the ladder and being the individual part The thing is, is that everything is so distorted right now. The perception is distorted. You're actually mm -hmm. on the earth template, but you're in a distorted perception of it. So individually, when you tell the story to people that you're shifting to a new earth, you're actually helping them create that for themselves. Okay. So in a way, yes, it's individual. Mm -hmm. If you tell, if you don't tell the story to the guy on the street corner, he's not going to shift because in his perception, he's creating his distorted perception of being homeless and not having enough and not mm -hmm. having power and uh, perhaps even having conversations in his head that can conflict each other and, and all that, but if you sat down and you told him you're not ill, you're powerful, you could create um, a new, you could, you know, get a job, you could do all these things, and t and really mm, talked him into it, then he would believe that he could do that. Mm -hmm. So it is individual in that respect, but then you can co-create together by, it's kind of like hypnosis. Mm -hmm. You tell somebody what they can do, they can do it, and they can see it. Yeah. One question that I have, and it seems to be um, one that a lot of stories are going on about 
catastrophic events happening to the earth? Is this part of this cleansing of the earth? Well, it's not going to happen in your reality. Okay. Why is that? Because you're creating that part mm -hmm. individually, but if someone else either wanted to experience what it would be like to go through the cataclysm of the old mm -hmm. earth falling away, then they could experience that. But those who are focusing on shifting and moving to a new earth mm -hmm. are going to have a very smooth and seamless type shift. They're not experiencing it now. Mm -hmm. um, so that there are several versions or timelines mm -hmm. that are occurring at the same time and people right now there are some timelines where people are experiencing all of those cataclysms at this time at this time mm -hmm. it's happening right now wow but we're not on that timeline okay. we're not experiencing that mm -hmm. um and it's it all goes back to awareness and vibration and as the different timelines and realities are splitting the the frequencies kind of they're splitting apart mm -hmm. and um so what you're saying is depending on what is happening in our minds is what is going to be happening yeah. in our reality. So, for example, those people who are preppers, and yeah. they like to uh, stock up for a few years, yeah. they will be experiencing uh, something where they will need to use all of that. Not necessarily. Um, there probably was a timeline that they were tied to where they knew that they needed to prep. Mm -hmm. Also, there was the guy walking up to the guy on the street corner saying, man, you need to prep. Mm -hmm. And the guy would do, the street corner guy would then go, what do you mean? And the other guy would say, you need to stock up on this, 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 and this. Mm -hmm. And then the guy would go, well, I've got to do everything I can to do that. And off they went. They mm -hmm. just got programmed okay. to go do that. When in fact, the the guy could, that, that didn't even need to happen. Mm -hmm. Um, if the guy were to go, well, you know what? If that were to happen here, I would just want to die. I wouldn't want to have to, mm -hmm. you know, fight for food or. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's about having a little bit of common sense yes. and realizing that if something were to happen so bad that you wouldn't be able to manifest what you need or you wouldn't be able to live, uh, then half the world would die anyway. Okay. So what are you going to be the one hoarding and eating all the food when everyone's <laughs> dying around you? So right. it's about common sense when it comes to that. Okay, good. She had other dreams that have affected her, and I'm wondering if some of these dreams are about the same thing. It was one about driving a car or a truck with no brakes, but never crashing. Can you tell her the interpretation of that dream? She's not in control, mm -hmm. but yet she can comp she can compromise. It's not the word she can. She's a chameleon, mm -hmm. so even though she's not in control, she can certainly keep from crashing. Okay, and figure it out as she goes. Every every little thing that's put in her way, she gets around it. She so, always gets around it. So her personal life, her business life, whatever's thrown at her. She always gets around it. Okay. Um, there is no crash and burn. You have to keep moving forward. Okay. What about, about driving a large RV or bus with many people on it? when she's responsible for them. What's that all about? She came here uh, with a group of people mm -hmm. and they 
all kind of feel like that they're responsible for each other, but she in particular mm -hmm. is more of a, um, she's more of a, a tender, a tender, tending the flock. Okay. So she has, feels like she has a responsibility for people that came with her and whether it may be just perceived, it's out of love okay. and caring, but she doesn't do that work in her always in her waking mm -hmm. it's all done on the on the other plane while she's sleeping yeah that's okay. all done while she's sleeping she visits them mm -hmm. checks on them she helps many souls to the light when it's time for them to go mm -hmm. she appears to people that are dying that are going to be leaving their body mm -hmm. and help helps them get used to seeing light beings hmm. and comforting them and she works on making sure that any kind of earth shifts that do happen to balance out a particular reality like a Fukushima Mm -hmm. That it, it could have been absolutely could have wiped out the whole. Could have, think about this. You've got a nuclear reactor that's continuously spilling out stuff. Mm -hmm. There's got to be beings that are working on that. She's one of those. Okay. The tsunami could have just completely wiped out so much more. And these beings are here to lessen the impact of these things that were forced upon nature. Mm -hmm. They weren't natural. No. Mm -hmm. Is this the dark, the dark side you're talking about? They, it's not necessarily dark. It's just of a, a they're really infected with this artificial intelligent computer glitch problem that nobody knows how to, how to fix and it just keeps getting a consciousness of its own and just is out of control and that's why it that's why it's been quarantined into this different bubble that we're in mm -hmm. it's not an earth it's not a it's more like a universe but it's not it's a bubble so that it can be dissolved and these poor souls can be extracted and put back where they need to be either on a new earth or back to source or in a healing place or wherever they need to be. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of souls to be, to, and it's not just physical. It's not just people in, it's not just one, and we're not just talking about one soul per body. Hmm. We're talking about shards of souls occupying so many shards of souls occupying a body. And then there's another level on the astral level so many souls that are lost mm -hmm. and then there's the i'm not sure i can't see if it goes past fourth or not but when the program gets messed with it affects across the board but i can't see how far the board goes it seems to be that there's even some fifth dimensional beings that just don't get it. They're not, they still aren't running the right program. Mm. Can you tell me a little bit about these souls that are lost? 
I seem to encounter a lot of them that haven't left this plane and are inhabiting other people's bodies as hitchhikers. Well, they're just, it's the vibration. It's all about the vibration for, they have been recycled here so many times mm -hmm. and put in so many nefarious situations, so many died suddenly mm -hmm. or in the dark ages or starved to death or there's just so many bad ways to die mm -hmm. and every time that happens when their soul lifts up out of the body it's not vibrating very fast and it just can't move it, it literally can't move so it gets it gets sucked in to this technology that takes it to a place where they get convinced that they need to go back and do better next time mm -hmm. and try to get out of a bad situation. Every situation's bad. All of the create, all of the simulations were bad, every, every single one. Hmm. So as long as they kept dying in bad ways, they kept being sucked back in. So if any of them woke up and, and realized, I've been put in a bad situation each time, I'm not going to do that again, mm -hmm. and they get to, they, if that's awareness and awakening, and they get to, they get to say this is it. I'm not doing that anymore. Mm -hmm. But that's the free will. But you don't know it. You, you don't realize it. So, did that answer your question? Well, yes. a lot of them get attached to the bodies. And oh, I yes, because they don't have any energy. They don't have any way to get energy themselves because they were vibrating so low mm -hmm. that they didn't. Uh, have a strong connection back to their creator mm -hmm. and uh, That's it's, it's simple. It's vibration and that's caused by fear and by um, the Sadness mm -hmm. and sickness and The shock of another being coming at you and killing you mm -hmm. just it's it's all it's it's all low vibrational mm -hmm. so once we have these beings attached to our bodies how can someone release them on their own a lot of them come here to my sessions and we talk to them we send them home but how can someone themselves scan for these beings and send them home mm. is that possible the first thing that needs to happen is to reestablish your own connection with your higher self outside of this reality because this reality is distorted mm -hmm. and then there's also the blocks to keep people from doing that mm -hmm. and so intending is always the first thing to do is to intend that you release all blocks that are keeping you from connecting with that higher aspect of yourself and, and source and then so intention to um, you have to communicate with them because they those those beings that are at attaching themselves they are they can't just be forced to do something. Mm -hmm. They have uh, a free will. Yes. And even though they may enforce themselves on somebody else without asking for that permission, they're, they're, they always find a way in. Mm -hmm. Maybe they're invi invited somehow, but regardless, whether they're invited or whether they come in, they still have the free will to leave or not unless the person says you need to leave. Mm -hmm. So it's very easy to say, make a declaration, any beings that are not of my higher self, that are not of my soul, are not allowed to stay. And the best, the best way to send them or to call, to, to create space for them to leave is, is in a loving manner. Mm -hmm. And people don't realize that because their source 
they have a spark of source within them and that spark may seem like a small spark it's still like a giant white hole mm -hmm. that is directly connected to source so all they have to do is literally go into that little white spark that's within them the beings have to literally just go into that mm -hmm. and they get to go back to source it's not like they're going outside of them somewhere mm -hmm. they go through the source spark within them mm -hmm. and get to go that way wonderful good why does she have dreams that seem so in insignificant and ridiculous are they cover-ups or or is something else that she's doing what's going on there astral realm is a very distorted place right now mm -hmm. and she goes mm, she splits herself up mm -hmm. into many many other parts of herself mm -hmm. and expands out and does so many things she would be shocked to know where all the places she goes so when she has a memory that's one just an arbitrary maybe one one thousandth mm -hmm. of all the places she is when she's not consciously awake in the body she just one little small one one thousandth of a memory of one of those things is all that she comes back with mm -hmm because of the veil, because of the mm, the distortion. It's a okay. distortion. So they mostly are meaningless because okay. if she only knew what she really was doing, well, she couldn't possibly pro process it. Mm -hmm. She's talked about writing a book. Is that something she should do? She needs to get one of the books done. Mm -hmm. She has several. The thing is, it's it's the books are programming mm -hmm. to reprogram people to make them um, believe in where we need to go. Mm -hmm. So it's not like since we're in a we're in a false reality that's distorted. We're just trying to create a new program that is based on love and on the future of peace and so that we move out of the distortion. So it's kind of like um, programming. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like your hypno hypnosis mm -hmm. is telling people something and having enough people believe in it will move those people who want that out of the distorted program. Mm -hmm. Good. Can somebody help her with those books? Can we ask for a guide on that to get her moving? Yeah, Mark Twain wants to help. Okay, good. Thank you very much. She has questions about her past lives, and we saw one as a Native American, but she wants to know if she was a founding member of the Knights Templar. Yes, and it was much different than anybody has explained. All the history has been changed. Mm -hmm. The true beginnings of all of that have never yet been explained. And she, if she wishes to, could actually be someone who can explain what really happened. Mm -hmm and why they were founded and how the work that they did then was setting up energetically grid work and uh, connection to magic mm -hmm for her 
to carry that template, thus they were called Templars, mm, okay. into this life so that people have the template for magic. Good. Would it be beneficial to perhaps have another session with Michelle so that she can explain this? She can go back to that life and we can get an explanation? Uh, yes, because... You can't expect her brain to process things that can't be explained with words on the on the first mm-hmm. um, on the on the first connection mm-hmm. with the information, but. The more she does this, the deeper she'll be able to go. Mm -hmm. And she needs to meditate more because that puts her in the frequency to drop right into uh, where she needs to go for a a session. Mm -hmm. So some more that she meditates after this session will help her to go even deeper and deeper and deeper. And as you said, she, this, this session was important to her because she came to you and said that she could not visualize in meditation or, Mm -hmm. or, or do, or, or really do any experience anything. But Mm -hmm. this session has put her and a different frequency and ability to switch because she can always fall right into it now Mm -hmm. from what you did. Mm -hmm. You broke her barrier. You broke her barrier of control. Mm -hmm. Good, because we have a lot of information to pry into. Was she ever in a scene? She was a scribe. Mm-hmm. She has a lot to bring out about the fact that even the Essenes and one known as Jesus were all part of still the distortion, mm-hmm. meaning that they were fighting for a cause completely lost in the game, fighting for the truth of the light, but that can also be, that can also be too polarized and distorted Mm -hmm. to where you think that your way is the right way when there's no right or wrong way. Mm being part of the light doesn't make you better than the dark. It's just an experience, a game. And they took their jobs very seriously. They worked endlessly and didn't they, they, they just didn't get as much as they, as much as they spread such good information, they were still missing the, the top layer, which is that we were all one mm-hmm. and we we're in a distorted matrix, we're in a distorted reality. And as long as we keep fighting, it's going to bring fight back to us. Mm -hmm. And they were under some mind control too. Ah, okay. So even... I mean, okay, so who drives stakes through hands? Mm-hmm. I mean, what is the, what, what is that 
going to do to show anybody that we're all one. Mm -hmm. So it's all part in a play mm -hmm. and I think that's all I have to say about that right okay. now. Would you be able to, to uh, talk more about that at a later time? When she is able to express herself better? Mm. One moment. Thank you. She will actually talk about it because it's something that needs to come out about religion and about what people think Jesus is or was and about non-religion and about this and about that. It's it's. It needs to be understood from a higher level that the dark came in for this period of time, the light came in for this period of time, then we went back to dark, we went to light. All of that is part of just a polarity game. And the whole goal here is to not rehash what happened and to realize that it was distorted as well, but to bring all of those aspects and shards of yourself that were cut off, split up, and pushed back into that reincarnation system to have those grand plans of doing something for good all of those shards suffered and they were fractals that need to be pulled back in. The game is ending and to become whole in the present so that you can move all of your shards out of the game and into a new game. But this game is distorted and the new game is more well it just makes more sense mm -hmm. to have a game that makes sense rather than a game you could never win over and over and over again and the more you fight in the distorted game the worse it got and that's what happened it just kept getting worse and worse and worse and you and and you kept getting more and more uh, distorted mm -hmm. and the consciousness about that and the understanding about what happened is more important than particular lifetime that had someone named Jesus or the Essenes mm -hmm. working for a cause unrelentlessly because they were just extraterrestrial beings that inserted themselves on a timeline to create a new story to try to change the future and they were still part of the distortion by doing that mm -hmm. so the more beings came in to do that distorting the future over and over and over again gave us a future where humanity would, did not exist mm -hmm. So, why not create a reality where they do exist and move all the beings to that reality? Mm -hmm. Nice. Now, you had talked about fractals. Is there a way that we as individuals can pull together all of our fractured soul? Yes, it comes back with uh, understanding who you are mm -hmm. as an aspect of source and intending that you... heal those fractals and then pull that energy back to you mm -hmm. it's no different than you expending all of your energy um, 
someone being uh, what they call an energy vampire, mm -hmm. taking all your energy, but then when you realize it and you say no, you pull all the energy back to you that they have taken. Mm -hmm. Well, this is very similar because everything is energy. So it's a fractal of, of energy that kept getting uh, split and they, and they kept sending it back through this process of mm -hmm. incarnating and um, then when something traumatic happened to you in a life, they, they created the, uh, the situation where the spark that was inside of you, when the tra trauma happened, uh, part of you, part of that would fracture off, mm -hmm. get stuck outside of you. And so then they could attach to that. Mm -hmm. And then they could, that became its own disembodied entity in itself. Mm -hmm. So every time the whole, the whole, the whole thing was a distortion, like a, like being in a madhouse, like being in one of those fun houses where, the, where the mirrors are all warped and, mm -hmm. and everything was, everything was, uh, created so that they could continue to fractalize you mm -hmm. and use you. Uh, against yourself and consciousness and against all of your soul family that you're here with mm -hmm. and that's coming to an end and you're you're making it happen yourself by realizing what it was mm -hmm. and realizing that you have the power to heal every part of you that was fractured by intending and in a loving place asking for those parts of you to be retract be re to be pulled back into you and using the power of that white source vortex within your heart to cleanse it and bring it all back in kind of like it being sucked back in mm -hmm. to the white hole beautiful was she ever a priestess at the Temple of Rejuvenation in Atlantis? Yes, and what happened with Atlantis and the priestesses and the priests and the scientists, they were all infected. Mm. They were all infected and meant to turn. They were made to turn their gifts into distorted versions of there were there were sex rituals there were they changed natural healing and singing and ways that the priestesses used to heal and they uh, made people start paying for it hmm. and giving an offering hmm. to be able to receive healing and um, then people weren't if they didn't have anything to give, they weren't getting healed. And then made the priestesses have to go do it in secret in the caves. Mm -hmm. And, um, I mean, it just became even more and more and more distorted until the imbalance and the sadness from the power and control was so tremendously overwhelming that it caused the destruction of the civilization. How is that lifetime affecting Michelle now? She carries that deep sadness with her all the time. Mm -hmm. Is it time that she released that sadness now? Not only that, but she's carried the sadness of all of the people with her. Would you allow me to release that sadness today? Yes. All right, I'm going to put my hand on your chest, and I want you to pull out all of that sadness from yourself in that lifetime, and all of the people from that lifetime. Pull it all out as I send it to the universe for healing. And tell me when I have it all. Pull it out of all of your cells. 
in every lifetime you've ever lived. Every aspect of you that's carrying us. And tell me when I have it. Okay. Let's pull it out and send it out to the universe. What would we like to put instead of that sadness? Forgiveness. Let's put lots of forgiveness in there. Feel that forgiveness coming in from source. Feel the light. And I'll touch your forehead and seal that in. Can you tell me how that looks now in her timelines? Well, that was affecting all of her organs. Mm -hmm. Is this the dark blue things that she saw in that scan one time? Yes, mm -hmm. it, it was... Huh. Sadness of everyone in Atlantis. Mm -hmm. So she had that stuck energy everywhere? Everywhere. Mm -hmm. Have we cleared it now? Yes, there was some pain in her left shoulder mm -hmm. a few moments ago. What was that all about? Something was trying to get out. Mm -hmm. Is it still there? Yes. Mm -hmm. Can we speak with it today? Mm -hmm. All right. Let me bring that energy up. Good evening. Are you male or female energy? Either. Mm, how were you created there? Thought form. Thought form. How were you created? What kind of thoughts created you? Frustration. Mm -hmm. What are you causing, Michelle, all this time? Hmm... Heaviness. Heaviness. Heaviness physically? Mentally? Which way? Physically. Physically. So when you cause her physical heaviness, what does that relate to? <laughs> All of those times that she had to come in and see the same thing happen. Mm -hmm. The battle between the light and the dark and the light. In the dark, she carries the frustration mm -hmm. of they're just not getting it. Now, we've let, a, let go a lot of that sadness. Why is it that you did not go with that sadness? Frustration is different. Mm -hmm. So how can I help you today? Would you like to be released? Or would you like to be transformed? Transformed. Okay. So let's see what you would like to be transformed mm -hmm. into in order to help Michelle in the best way possible. How can you transform yourself into something positive that she could use in her life? She could use... You said you caused heaviness. Yeah. Would you like to be transformed into lightness? Yes. So that she could feel light in her body. Yes. She could feel all of the heaviness melt away. Yes. Transforming her into a beauty that can feel light. Yes. Very good. So go ahead and begin the transformation. And as you transform... Tell me what you are doing. Going into all of her cells, mm -hmm. putting light in her DNA. Very good. Tell me when you're done. And there's a block in her. Mm -hmm. Her head. Mm -hmm. What's causing that block? What do you see it's there? In the middle of her, behind her eyes. Mm -hmm. Let's find out what that energy is while you continue. It's I'm gonna, moving. I'm going to move it down to express itself. Good evening. Can Hello. I 
Are you are you a thought form or are you an energy? Energy. Mm-hmm. Are you male or female? Female. Female. How long have you been there with Michelle? Mm. A long, long time. time. Long time. Was she a little girl or was she Yes. A, what caused you to attach to her? Fear. Fear. Mm -hmm. What happened to you? Why are you so afraid? I wasn't afraid. She you, was. Okay. So tell me about you. Did you ever have a body before? Yes. Mm -hmm. How old is that body right now? I don't have a body right now. In that time frame, when you had one? I was a little girl. You were a little girl. And what happened to you? How did you lose your body? I hit by a car. Mm -hmm. And what, hurt, what got hurt? Where did you get hurt? In the head. In the head. Mm -hmm. So your head must hurt very much. Not anymore. Why is that? Because I don't have a body. Mm -hmm. But I imagine in that lifetime, your, hurt, your, your head hurt a lot, didn't it? No, it was instant. Instant, all right. So tell me, why is it that you didn't go to the light? Because she is the light. Mm, she sure is. She has a lot of light in her. Yeah, and mm -hmm. I hid behind her eyes. And you hid behind her eyes. Would you like to feel even better than that light? This is pretty good light. Mm, I'm going to show you something even better. Inside of you, there's another light. It's a little spark, and that's the spark of the Creator. I want you to find that light and make it bigger and bigger. Spread that light out to where it takes up your whole being. And as it does, tell me what happens. How does it feel to be light yourself? It feels very good to be light. Mm -hmm. So do you see that you don't need to have another source of light? You are light. I haven't had another source of light. I joined. I joined her in the light. Mm -hmm. But I've been dislodged. Mm -hmm. Are you ready to be put together again? Yes. All right. So go ahead and pull out all of your energy from her head. You don't need to be there anymore. I'm going to have you go right up through the crown of her head. Archangel Michael will help you and escort you to the light. Pull it all out. And tell me when you get to the source of that light. Okay. Tell me who greets you there. Mom. Mm -hmm. May the light of the universe always accompany you. Thank you very much. And now let me speak with the higher self. Yes. Can you tell me if there's any others in her body like that that need to be escorted home? These are these are parts of uh, her that were other lifetimes mm -hmm. that didn't go home, that were forced back in, mm -hmm. and. Then they knew not to go back to the recycle. Mm -hmm. So they found a part, a, a place to go mm -hmm. until they could go uh, straight back and not be recycled again. Mm -hmm. They so, weren't doing harm necessarily, but had we're carrying the vibration of that lifetime, which is not, not good not for that. her. Mm -hmm. How does she look now? Just one moment.
she she's good mm -hmm. is there anything in her throat that's keeping her from getting food and water and pills down can you check that for her as she as she continues to raise her vibration mm -hmm. It's hard for her to e even eat organic mm. fruit, yes. food, water, anything. Um, How can she nourish herself with her throat closed? Sunlight. Sunlight. She needs to be outside? Yes. Okay. Will that help her throat open up a little bit? She doesn't need, people don't need as much food as they think they do. Mm -hmm. When they get to a certain vibration, they could live on a few figs mm -hmm. or a few nuts a day. Okay. It's a reminder more than it is a block. Okay. She gets past the block because she's crafty that way. <laughs> but it is a reminder that it's not needed. Okay. It's not needed to eat three meals a day for her. Mm -hmm. It's a program. All right. So will you help her with that so that she doesn't get frustrated about that anymore? Just one moment. Let's look into that. It's also the flap mm -hmm. that holds things down mm -hmm. has a leak in it. The esophageal, esophagus. Mm -hmm. And she also swallows a lot of air. Can we do some healing on that today? Yes. Thank you. How is it that she can scan her own body without any clear without being clairvoyant? She needs to feel and and pay attention to what it the feelings, mm -hmm. discomforts will show her. Discomforts show her where. She's not moving her energy. Okay. You help her with that so that she can understand a little bit more about her body? She needs to listen to her body. Okay. Well, she says she considers herself clairvoyant, although her third eye is open, but she can't see. Why is that? Why do you need to see when you know? <laughs> she wants to be able to find implants in people. Uh -huh. She can use a sonar like a dolphin does. Mm -hmm. And ping a frequency and learn how to feel when it gets bounced back to her. Mm-hmm. If there's something discordant or something harmonious. Mm -hmm. And this ping, is it a, is it a sound? Will she be using an instrument or is she using her mind? It is sound. Okay. That is something that she does naturally with her voice when okay. she's talking to people. Mm -hmm. And she doesn't even realize it. Oh, okay. So if she were to now be aware of it and pay attention to how it feels coming back to her, mm -hmm. she'll be able to pinpoint uh, things that are not harm harmonious. Okay. Good. She says she uses the pendulum a lot, and she connects with the higher self over soul and source. 
She wants to know if it's a clear channel or are there any interferences? There are only distortions. There are no interferences. Mm -hmm. Distortions in the template, distortions in the thought process. As long as she's asking from the heart, mm -hmm. she'll get a, an answer from the heart. Okay. If she's asking from the mind, mm -hmm. she'll get an answer from the mind. Okay. Which may be more of the fun house than mm -hmm. in the heart. Okay. Do you have any messages for star seeds? <sighs> to remember that you're never alone. It's a distortion to think and feel that you're alone. breaking through the distortion in your by going within your heart <clears throat> and remembering that you're not just a star seed but you're a star and you're a portion of a star like a seedling part of a star but if you only knew how big that star was and how loving that star is to send a piece of itself here in this reality that was brave and that was that's true love to do that and to know that this is just a very 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 small part of your full full energy and that Rather than thinking about going back to that energy, think about bringing more of that energy here and creating something new here and expanding here and changing everything that is here into something that is there, which makes it here. Wonderful. Does that make sense? Yeah, you're bringing, bringing heaven to, heaven to earth. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Do you have any messages about the event and the new earth shift? Mm, the event. Mm -hmm. I've heard, heard many people talking about the event. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, is everyone is right. There are people saying that the event is a financial collapse there are people saying that the event is a wave of energy the people saying that the event is disclosure the event is 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 different for for everyone but the main event is the moment that you have the light completely encompass everything that you are and you get to a balanced place and you are out of the distortion for a moment of time for a period a moment it's not really time time stops mm -hmm. And you are source. You are connected with source. You are source. You are instantly healed of anything that you hadn't completed. So you're never really lagging. Eventually, this washing over you with this light will burn off of anything else that's left and you it's like a um, light bulb coming on mm -hmm. and then 
in that moment, you can decide whether you want to go back into the body and continue with the shift of the earth and of everyone as a collective or just bask in that moment for a hundred years if you want and then go back. Mm. It's like you're outside of time. Okay. And then you can have better decide and understand why you need to go back because most people will go back. Okay, good. Do you have any final message for Michelle today? We think that you did a really good job in explaining about trust and unfolding mm -hmm. and allowing and she should have enough proof to look back and see how things have unfolded to know that everything is just as it should be. However, we will say that what she's doing is very important and we, we guide her and it is uh, because she is in a, a human body and having to live in a reality that's, that's not her true nature, it is imperative for us to, to help guide and we understand when she does have questions and we are very willing to always help and we want to let her know that every day, every time, that every moment that she looked at the clock today or at a number, she looked at the clock at 111, <laughs> she looked at her odometer at 90009, she looked at the, her device that she listens to music when it would be at 111, 1 minute 11 seconds. Mm -hmm. She looked up just at the moment to see the mile marker 33. She looked up just at the moment to see the license plate 77. There were, we put as many number coincidence markers in her reality today because that's sometimes all we're permitted to do mm -hmm. to show her that we're here with her every step of the way and she laughed and we like it when she laughs mm -hmm. and we want her to know that she's truly connected more than she realizes and if she would just let us as her higher conglomerate of lifetimes, future and past, let us drive the car sometimes and It's time for her to start having fun and she will look back at this day today and laugh because it's about to get really wild for her and the most challenging position is coming and she will be absolutely prepared for it because this is not something you can go to school for. It's something that you have to feel through like if you are a Jedi on Star Wars. Mm -hmm. It's a force. It's a feeling. It's not anything you can study for. It's not anything that can be taught, and it comes from the heart. So there is no classroom that you could ever go to. You would just are. You either have it or you don't. Mm -hmm. And she has it. And 
branches. She's going to be connecting all the people who have it. She's going to show them how to use what they have. She's going to That's how the new earth comes into the reality is they create a connection between the distorted reality and that reality. They create the tunnel. They create the um, stargate, mm-hmm. wormhole. She's going to show them how to use the force to do that. Beautiful. Thank you so much. Would you be willing to do a part two to get more information out on the new earth? Oh, yes. Thank you very much. I thank you and all of those guides that assisted us today in this session. I know that she's going to appreciate it. I know I do. Wide awake, feeling wonderful all over. Welcome back. Mm. Wow. Mm, Yeah. What's interesting is that the main thing that that they wanted to get across is that I knew everything already. Mm -hmm. And I've already shared a lot of that stuff, Mm -hmm. a lot of that knowledge. How long do you feel you were on this journey? Um, about uh, an hour. Two and a half hours. Really? Really. On this bed for two yes. and a half hours? Yes, ma'am. Well, you're probably longer because that's not counting the induction. Oh my gosh. Really? Yeah. Wow. Pretty good, huh? Wow. So do you feel like you were hypnotized this time? <laughs> no, but... I think the main thing that I needed to understand is that I'm always hypnotized. Yeah. I'm, every, every day, every waking yeah. moment, I'm hypnotized. We already talked about that. Yeah. How we're already in hypnosis all the time. Yeah, all the time. But it seemed like you really needed to break through this time. Mm-hmm. Now, so I, had, I had a little bit of difficulty. I have no, I have no problem in waking speaking Mm -hmm. but I had a problem speaking Mm -hmm. this time yeah I think it's re it's it's not reestablishing it's building a connection Mm -hmm. to allow a different being to speak through me it's a different being this time it's Mm -hmm. not the one that speaks through me all the time because that being has no problem speaking it's a different being it's a it's a new higher Mm -hmm. level Mm -hmm. that we're connecting to interesting that is having a little bit of a problem uh, making my making my brain and, and my mouth talk. That's why you need to meditate more and, yeah. and make more connections. Yeah. Do you want to share this, taking out personal stuff? Mm, probably not. No? Okay. Because. <laughs> it's big. It is? Was it big? Yeah. I mean, because I th- I've, I... I feel like people may not take it so seriously because I couldn't speak. Oh, you did great. Because I couldn't couldn't come up with a word. It's okay. You're trying to get concepts out of this little mouth, that this little brain that doesn't have the, the concepts that they do. Two and a half hours? Yes, ma'am. I don't think you remember all of it. <laughs> I think that's the thing. Yeah. I think that we think we remembered all of it, but we don't. Because mm-hmm. there's... Two and a half, it was a lot of talking. A really? lot of explaining. Oh, yeah. A lot of it. I think I better make that decision after I listen to it. <laughs> I think that's the best thing. I mean, I know I know you would cut out because I, oh, I yeah. think, All the I think stuff. there's no way I could even say yes or no because if it's, it's probably a yes. But when I go back and listen to it, I'm probably going to go, oh, my God, I don't remember that. <laughs> Because, <laughs> because really, if there's two and a half hours, and I think it's an hour, there's yeah. an hour and a half. I don't remember. I probably wasn't even actually present. Mm-hmm. It was probably. It was great. Really? Yeah. 
A lot of explanation. A lot of explanation. Yeah, I can't wait to listen to it. It was good. I can't wait to listen to it because... Because <laughs> honestly... That means there's two. there was two things, two conversations going on at once. Maybe. The one that I was thinking I was saying, and then what really came out. Who knows? Who knows? Oh, You'll... my oh my God, Alba, this is going to be... <laughs> Mind-blowing for you. Oh, my God, yes. Well, we'll see what happens. Let's, let's, two and let's a half say, hours? Let's say goodbye anyway. Just like it's as if we were going to publish it. And oh, my God. Two yeah. and a half hours. Yeah, it was good. It was really good. <laughs> well... <laughs> So you always do this right after somebody comes yes. out. Yes, yes. They're so just they're like in shock. Yeah, yeah. So tell everybody how shocked you are. I'm very shocked. <laughs> Two and a half hours. Two and a half hours. So what I consciously can recall is about feels like an hour. Mm -hmm. And I'm not just saying that. I mean, yeah. really felt like maybe an hour, hour and a half. So there must be a whole level that I mm -hmm. don't even remember or know that I said. And I can't wait to find out. What that so is. how is this experience compared to other experiences that you've had? I know you've been hypnotized before, or you say you've been totally hypnotized. different. Okay. What was the difference this time? Um, there's a part that breaks through yeah. the conscious mm -hmm. uh, thinking yeah. and completely surrenders you mm -hmm. to the system, to the process. Yeah. And when you did that, I'm thinking, holy crap, that's ingenious. What, I mean, I know that that's probably a technique that you're yeah. taught in, yeah. in and hypnosis, which hypnotherapy. is hypnotherapy, yeah. which is different. There's a lot than, of hypnotherapy techniques that are not used. Uh, well, QHHD is hypnosis. It's not hypnotherapy. And sometimes you do different things in order to, to make that person feel more relaxed. And we did a totally different induction, which was different. Did you like that? I was totally relaxed. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that, that, yes. <laughs> you knew exactly what to do. You knew exactly what to do. Well, I've done a few of these. <laughs> Just kept, a few. I, in the back of my mind, I kept thinking, brilliant, brilliant, <laughs> but not really following it or, yeah. or trying to analyze it. Yeah. But just, I just remember thinking, that's brilliant. That's brilliant. You know? Mm -hmm. So why would, why did you come here? What was the reason why I you came know. here? I don't know. You were just led. <laughs> <laughs> she drove, what, like three hours? Yeah. Or three hours to get here. Yeah. No, I don't... I didn't know why mm -hmm. I booked the session. I mm -hmm. knew that I needed... I just knew I needed to be here. Yeah. <clears throat> I had watched your videos, mm -hmm. and I was um, very fascinated by your method and mm -hmm. what you do and, and how you're teaching people through your videos. Through the videos, yeah. And the wait uh, was three months, I think, but mm. so much unfolded in that three months before we got to this yeah. time right here that needed to happen before right. this. Right. So that was, it's worth it. I mean, it's not mm. like we're going to die or anything before we have our session. <laughs> so just yeah. wait. You know, if you book a session, just wait. That's right. Everybody comes exactly when they need to come. If for some reason you have to cancel, it's not the right time. I always leave it up to divine guidance. Um, even if you have to wait six months, it's because you have to wait six months. Something has to happen for you to prepare for this. It's almost like when you book the session, it's a trigger for your whole life to change so that when you get here... <laughs> So when you get here, you're ready for the next step because mm -hmm. it truly does connect you to mm -hmm. your higher self. And some mm -hmm. people, everyone, no, not some people, everyone's job right now is to connect yeah. to their higher self. Mm -hmm. And if you can be hypnotized, not hypnotized, but put into a hypnosis state mm -hmm. to connect mm -hmm. with your higher self, job done. Right, right. And then your whole life goes forward from there as being connected to your higher self. Mm-hmm. And as we said, when, when she got up, um, all hypnosis is self-hypnosis. So all we're doing right now is reminding you of how to get back into your own state of hypnosis. It's really nothing that I do. It's just getting you back to the state that is so natural for you. Well, so the first thing I realized when I came out was that I'm always in a state of hypnosis and my it's mm -hmm. like, that's what I really, I didn't know when I booked what I was going to learn when I came mm -hmm. here, but that's what I learned. I'm always in a state of hypnosis mm -hmm. and waking life. Mm -hmm. 
And, and you're channeling all the time. You're channeling all the time. You mm -hmm. are not yourself. You are a conglomerate of beings mm -hmm. always channeling through, mm -hmm. through you. Mm -hmm. And what we did today was connect with a whole nother level. Mm -hmm. I just, I mean, I've been channeling with a higher self that is like on this level. And we just connected all the way yeah. up here. And it was hard for me to, to have any words. It was hard for me to speak. And it wasn't even like I was, it wasn't even like I had a thought that I was trying to, it was like almost like nothing. It was like nothingness. We connected <laughs> with nothing, nothingness. Mm -hmm. And that's how you create yeah. when you connect to nothingness. Yeah. And mm -hmm. so. Yeah, I could have just sat there and not said anything for an hour, and it would have been just the same as mm. what I said. <laughs> <laughs> Except yes. it wouldn't have gotten on tape. <laughs> that part, then you is wouldn't have known. Probably good for other people. Yeah, to, it'll be fascinating because I only remember obviously a portion, a, of a it. little portion, and it's probably going away as we speak. A lot of it's going probably away. Probably so. Yeah. So if you would like to book a session with me. I'm at albawyman.com. I also travel all over the place and you can look online for um, my newsletter to sign up for my newsletter and hopefully I'll be by a city uh, near you. Now we do have something coming up soon. Yeah. <laughs> Would you like to tell everybody about what's coming up? Sure. Um, if I can get those thoughts together. Yeah. <laughs> October 7th uh, in Sarasota, Florida, we are having a, a quantum healing beyond 5d conference with candace crawl goldman we mm -hmm. have some very special other guests as well but yes. you are our headliner <laughs> um i've been following your technique for a long time and have seen how you've morphed it into exactly what you need to be doing mm -hmm. and for how me. yeah mm -hmm. and how um creative you've been with it and how effective the procedure is in and uh, clearing and healing people. That's mm -hmm. the main thing is, is healing people mm -hmm. and connecting them once again to them, their higher selves. Mm -hmm. So, um, I'm, I mean, I've just went from client to like, okay, now <laughs> <laughs> get yourself back. I, yeah. I'm just, uh, giddy. Yeah. And thinking about bringing you to the audience of people who either are, quantum practitioners mm -hmm. or that QHHT, uh, or want to be a quantum mm -hmm. practitioner mm -hmm. or just are interested in all of this higher mm -hmm. self healing yeah. talk. Mm -hmm. Um, when people come to these events, the vibration is very nice. high because all the beings come in, mm -hmm. all the higher self conglomerates, councils, <laughs> archangels, angels, helpers, they all yeah. come in. And they help uh, heal people as much as they allow themselves to be mm -hmm. healed at these mm -hmm. at these events. So it's going to be nice. So if you are not doing anything in October, <laughs> yeah, come to Sarasota. Come, come to the ninety nine point nine percent quartz crystal sand beaches there on Siesta Key. They're very healing mm -hmm. uh, as well. So it's a great place to have a conference. Obviously, mm -hmm. I live there in Sarasota, so I won't have to travel far. Yeah. Well, I'll have three and a half hours or three hours. Yeah, to exactly. <laughs> Through the swamp. It'll be cool. It'll be cool. So thanks for watching. Oh, and so uh, can go to N5D. To, oh. uh, uh, not N5D. N5D is sponsoring my radio show, but Candace will have this on her website. It's not okay. quite up yet. And we could put it. To, I'll put a link we'll on it, too. put it on yours. Yeah, yeah. So I'll put it on a link, We haven't too. put it out, out yet, but it will be out soon. Perfect. Have it, all the details. Perfect. So thanks for watching and hopefully I'll see you sometime in the future. Okay. Bye. Give me a hug. Give me a hug. That's the best part. <laughs>